In the following video, we'll show you the steps to be followed when carrying out a technical inspection of the Diamond DA40. First of all, we'll check the aircraft manual and remove the peat tube cover which is on the left wing. Once removed, we stow it in the baggage compartment. Then, we need to take a general look at the cockpit and ensure that there are no foreign objects such as cords, cables, etc. that could interfere with the controls during flight. We have to check all the breakers are in. We should also check that the ignition is off, the keys are out, the mixture at idle cut off, avionics and electric masters are off. These steps form a scan flow, ensuring that we check that everything is switched off, closed, cut off and the RPM lever forward. Parking brake set, the ignition off and the keys out. Once we have finished with this, we turn on the generator and check the lights. We have the lights here. We should turn all of them off in order to check both landing, taxi, position and strobes, which are on the wingtips and on the leading edge of the left wing. When we are done, the electric master that we had already switched on must be switched off again. And this completes the interior pre-flight checklist. Our point of reference will be this anchorage. We follow the checklist and begin by checking the left main gear. We have to ensure that the landing strut does not have any damage and the brake disc and pads are in good condition. Also, we have to make sure that there is no leakage of brake fluid, check the condition of the tyre and, if its pressure is correct, that it has sufficient tread and that it's ready to be used. We'll continue by checking the leading edge of the wing and the stall warning horn, checking that it is operational and has no obstructions. Continuing with the leading edge. Here we have our fuel tank. We must check that it is tightly closed and locked, having already made sure that we have sufficient fuel. We continue by checking the lower part of the wing. Here we have the peat tube, the cover of which has already been removed during the pre-flight interior check, making sure that there is not any kind of obstruction or problem which would prevent the correct operation. We have both landing and taxi lights here. We have to check that the fixings are in good condition and the screws are correctly fastened. We've already checked that they are before. Continuing along the leading edge, here we have the navigation lights and strobes. We also have to check that they are well attached. We should know they're ready because we've already checked them during the interior pre-flight check. Here we continue along the trailing edge. Firstly, our ailerons, which unlike the DA20, mustn't be moved by hand. We simply check that they are in good condition, that the actuators are correctly attached. The functionality should be checked from the primary flight controls. Then we move on to the flaps. We don't move these either, they're fixed. It's very important never to step on the flaps in order to gain access to the cockpit. We always use this marked area. We continue by expecting the gear from the rear. From this angle, we have a better view of the brake discs and pads, and can also make sure the rear part of the strut is in good condition. Now it's time to check the rear door has been closed correctly. We continue checking the fuselage and empennage. We have to check that the static port is free from any kind of obstruction. As well as this, we check that the comms and navigation antennas are not bent or damaged. We continue with the empennage, checking along its length that there's no damage, and that the tail skid is not scraped and that the empennage and joins are in good condition. This aircraft also has a T-tail configuration like the DA-20. We apply a gentle pressure, just checking the movement and tension of the rudder cable. We continue with the trailing edge, leading edge of the stabilizer, and the right side. We continue by checking that the static probe is free from any obstructions, and with that, we have finished with the empennage. Now, we continue with the right wing. We start with the main right landing gear. We do the same checks as we did on the left side. The tread, pressure, disc, brake pad, brake fluid, and the condition of the strut. Once we check that they are in good condition, we continue with the trailing edge of the right wing. Firstly, the flaps, without applying any kind of pressure. As we already mentioned, the ailerons are not checked by hand at this point, but from the flight controls. We continue with the actuators, that they are in good condition and correctly attached. Lastly, the wingtip, navigation and strobe lights, which should be in the right place and well attached. The anchor point that we have here is used for mooring the plane with ropes. Whenever we fly at the beginning of the day, or if it's the last flight, we have to untie them or tie them as we go. 
There are two anchor points, which are located near each wingtip. We continue along the leading edge. We check the other tank, which should be tightly closed and locked. Also, we have to check the bottom of the wing and along the leading edge to the root and the front of our main landing gear. Once we've reached this point, all that remains is the final part of the inspection, the nose section. Firstly, here we have the oil tank. We have to check that we have enough oil. In this aircraft, the oil should be between 4 and 8 US quarts for VFR and between 6 and 8 US quarts for IFR. We turn the oil dipstick to release it and clean it carefully, as if the aircraft has recently flown it can still be hot and there's a risk of burning. Once we've cleaned it, we reinsert the dipstick again. We close the cap so the indication will be correct. We take it out again. Now is when we have a precise indication of the oil level. In this case we have 5.5, almost 6 quarts. Once we've replaced the oil dipstick and locked it in place, we close the inspection port and this completes the oil check. Continuing with the nose section, we have our exhaust, which we examine for damage or obstruction. Then we move on to the nose gear, and once we have checked the nose gear, we remove the chocks and we stow them in the baggage compartment. Here we have to check for the air intake covers. These are foam rubber inserts for the intakes. They must be removed. We check that everything is open and without any obstruction. Then we check the propeller, passing our hand along it to make sure that both the leading and trailing edges do not have any kind of fissures, cracks or impacts, and that they are in generally good condition. Finally, the spinner. We don't apply any pressure here either. We have in the manual indications of the zones of the aircraft that we mustn't press, touch, move or apply any kind of pressure, because when stationary, it can cause fatigue over time, which may, to some extent, affect the working of the aircraft. Once we've reached this point, we have completed the exterior and interior pre-flight checklist and are ready for engine startup and continuing with flight operations in a safe manner.